What's up you guys? Welcome back to my channel. Um, so this is the long awaited birth story of our baby girl Darren. I decided to bring Damien in one because he walked in here as I was filming the last one and then it just kind of threw me off. So we're just gonna start it over with him in it. But also two, because the way the story went, his input is actually like- It matters. It matters, but it's also like the clearest of the day because I was a little woozy doozy. Also, if you want to compare the, the birth story from Daxon to Darren, it'd be a good one because it's way two completely different ones. With Daxon, I was induced at 41 weeks, so I had to go through the whole induction process. Um, I did have an unmedicated birth with him, besides like some IV meds, and I also pour and hemorrhage a little bit um, with having him, and so that's kind of the main differences. But. Go watch his, I'll link it in the description box below if you wanna watch it. But with Darren, uh, like I said, it's, it's a whole different situation. Some of my birth wishes were I wanted to, to labor at home as, as long as possible and then go to the hospital at the latest, not latest opportunity, but I wanted to have her at the hospital. I wanted an unmedicated birth. Yeah, I think those are the main things. So I go to my doctor's appointment at 40 weeks, which was a day before I actually turned 40 weeks. So Wednesdays were my new week weekdays, Tuesdays were my appointment days. So I go in and at this point, I'm almost 40 weeks and I'm annoyed because I thought I would have her by now. Um, I had a really, really- Pissed off. <laughs> I had a really, really tough pregnancy. She was healthy, she was doing fine. It was just a mental and physical thing for me. Everything hurt on my body, my hips, my back. I was just in a lot of pain body-wise uh, and uncomfortable. Mentally, I just wasn't all there. Like, it's just really hard for me. Um, and I didn't have a lot of energy, so any of the energy that I did have was just towards my family, which is the most, my, my main priority. So everything else kind of was on the back burner. And I was ready to just be able to get back to having more of a grasp on my total life and everything that was involved with it. And so just from a mental health, like I just was, I was done with being pregnant. And all the growth scans that we went to for her, she was measuring like a week, a week and a half, almost two weeks ahead of her scheduled due date, but they wouldn't change her due date because it wasn't enough. So I really, in my mind, thought that she would have come before I turned 20 week, 40 weeks, but here we are. So I go to my appointment and I'm just like expecting to not be dilated at all because I I wasn't feeling anything. I may have been, I had like stomach contractions here and there from, but I was having those from like 36 weeks. And so nothing was really happening. I wasn't feeling anything happening. And so I go to the appointment and he checks me and he said that I was three to four centimeters dilated, um, which shocked me one, cause I didn't feel anything. But two, I'm like, people go, people are in the hospital when they're like three to four centimeters dilated. So this is kind of crazy. He told me that since I was already this far, along like dilated um and i was like 80 percent effaced he didn't expect me to go any further um and if but if i did we had decided that saturday the 26th i would be induced so if i didn't go into labor before then then that was the cutoff date but he was like you're gonna go before then and it's gonna be fairly quickly um just because with daxon i was only in labor for 11 hours or 13? 13. 13. I was, I was only in labor for 13 hours and I was induced starting at a fingertip dilated. So basically not even dilated. And, it's, and you pushed at 32 minutes. Yeah. And it was it's like, this is my second pregnancy. So they always say that your second pregnancy is gonna be a little bit faster, whatever, whatever. So I'm like, great. Like I was so happy when I left the hospital. I'm like so excited. I, you know, everything that I wanted to hear. Um, and so we, the next day comes, I go home and I start doing all of the, keep continue doing all the things that I've been doing to try to induce labor. Drinking the tea, the red, red, red raspberry leaf tea, bouncing on the ball, um, walking up and down my stairs. Cause in Arizona, it's like 115 degrees outside and there's no way you're gonna find me curb walking outside. So I was just walking stairs, doing squats, doing the mild circuit, if you know what that is. Doing all of the things. Um, so the next day comes, nothing's happening. I go all day doing all the same things, bouncing, drinking teas, squats, all the things, nothing's happening. We all go outside to go, to, they go, him and Daxon are in the pool. We're all just hanging outside at the pool. I'm bouncing on my ball, cause me and the ball are like besties at this point. And I'm just like, this dude lied to me. <laughs> I guess like my doctor lied to me. He knew that I was on the brink of a mental breakdown. And he was like, let me just tell her something that's going to make her happy and give her hope. Because I'm like, I was three to four centimeters dilated yesterday. 
I don't feel any different, nothing at all. And I'm doing everything. And so at this point I'm like, well, Saturday. I have to get a do skin on Saturday. At six o'clock, we come inside, and I'm like, I'm just gonna go lay down, do one of the parts of the mile circuit, where you like lay on your side and have some pillows and have your, have your leg dangle off the side of the bed. I don't know where you, everyone else was. They y'all were just like in the kitchen or something. Yeah. Oh, wait, can I can, can I like interject? Yeah, can interject oh, right. say less. Yeah. So she was sick. She's like, this isn't happening. I don't know why he lied to me, and I'm like. Honey, like, it'll be fine. Like, it's happening tonight. And I told her that it was happening tonight. I don't know what feeling or inclination I had, but I was just like, today's the due date. It's gonna happen tonight. So yeah, we get in the house. Today's, it's like six. Ordered some some tacos. Man, some dude from Uber Eats stole our tacos. So I had to go to the taco shop and pick them up. Your mom's playing tennis. Yes. My mom's giving Dax in the bath. I go to get the tacos. I let them know, like, look, like, whatever happens, if it if it if it goes down, like, get Sadell in the car. I mean, I knew it was going down that night. But I I'm unaware of this. In my mind, I'm still like, nothing's happening. I don't feel any different at all. So I go lay down on the bed to try to get things going and. Like six o'clock, like I said, I don't know what that sound is, so don't mind it. And I start feeling some like like contractions, but they weren't close together. They were like seven to eleven minutes apart, and I'm having to like breathe through them, but not like super painful at all. Next to my doula, I'm like, I think something's happening. I'm just laying down resting because the last two nights or three nights really, I hadn't been sleeping well, so I was like really tired too. I wasn't. I didn't sleep well the night before because I was. <laughs> anxious or like paranoid that I was going to like sleep through the contractions or something and like not make it to the hospital so I was up at like three o'clock in the morning just like waiting for something to happen that never happened so I was gonna try to like lay down and take a nap um, and I started feeling the contractions so I'm texting her and she's like what are you doing I sent her a picture of me like laying sideways and I tell her that they're seven, seven to 11 minutes apart and she's like, okay, make sure, you, make sure you continue to time them. And so he's still gone and I'm like, well, let me just get up and go eat something. Cause I didn't want tacos, I'm a bitch. I had spaghetti in the fridge, so I just heat up some spaghetti. And I, me and Daxon were eating dinner. Um, and as I was eating, I was having contractions. This is about seven o'clock, 7.30ish. And I'm having to stand up and like sway when the contractions come and then sit down finish eating my food, stand up, sway, kind of breathe through those. So as that, and at this point they're like five to seven minutes apart. And at that point I was on the way back from getting tacos and I called her and I said, look, we're going to the hospital. I don't know what time you're trying to go, but we're going soon, sooner than later. I said the latest we're leaving the house is 8.30. We are going to the hospital. And he's just talking, like, I'm like, okay, whatever, like, Tonight. I, I run this, so, like this. I run what's happening with my body right now, so you may, may think that, but like, I'm not having this baby today. Like, this is not an actual, like, real labor. This, to me, I'm thinking, like, this is just, this is just my we body. And if having a something. baby, my thing was, we ain't having a baby in the house. <laughs> that, that is a, that's a no. So. I don't know what to do. So I, I don't know if y'all out there know what so I finished eating, I'm like, okay, let me just go take a shower. My doula texts me, she's like, hey, whenever you have the shower, I'm gonna call you so that I can hear what your contractions sound like and how you're like working through them and without having to check. That is a good inclination of how far along you are. So I get out of the, sh or when I get in the shower, at this point, they were like three to four minutes apart. And I'm telling you, I'm a bit delusional because I'm telling you this and I'm telling the story and I'm probably thinking that you're probably thinking like, duh, Sadelle. Like that is, you're in active labor, like something's happening. But again, in my mind, I'm like, this is, this is nothing. And even so much where like, when I was on the phone with my doula and she's like, okay, like, this is something like, what do you want to do? Cause she knows, she knew that I wanted to labor at home. Um, but she also was, and she also knew that I didn't want to have like any medication and she was nervous that going to the hospital and I not being as far along or whatever, they would try to like, not force me, but you know, just try to get me to do, take things, medications, pain meds, whatever, um, and it go against my birth wishes. And so, but at this point I was like, I can't imagine being in a car 
with my contractions feeling any worse than this. So let's just go to the hospital, and this is where the delusion comes in. Let's just go to the hospital, get set up, anchor down in the hospital, get comfortable in the hospital so that when I do really start feeling contractions and they do start getting like even more intense and da 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 da, I'm comfortable there and I have all of my pain management mechanisms and I have all the things and I'm good to go. So the app that <laughs> she was using, it got to a point. Like, it was probably as soon as I got home. So your contractions are getting stronger. Basically, your baby is on the way. No, I, I got two. The first one was contractions are starting to get um, closer together. Now is the time to prep for the hospital. So if you haven't packed your bags, get all of your um, paperwork together, or like, go take a shower. And then, maybe like 10 minutes later, get your ass <laughs> it said, to the hospital. go to the hospital right now. <laughs> And again, in my mind, I'm like, it's, it too was telling me to go just to hunker down and get comfortable at the hospital. So we have everything packed, we're good to go. We get in the car at 8.20 and we get in the car and I just remember being like, I cannot have another contraction in this car. Like, this is so painful. I need to be able to move to sway. I need counter pressure because at this point you were applying counter pressure on my back at the house. But I could, he, he was driving, so he couldn't do it in the car. And I just remember being like, Damien, if you don't drive fast, like, I need you to drive faster. Like, I, when, <laughs> I cannot have another contraction in this car, drive faster. And I looked down at the speedometer, and he's going, you're going, going 89 miles he's going 89. at this point. So then <laughs> I'm like, zooming. all right, let's get it. So I push it, and then I get up to like 110, and I'm like, yeah, we just need to get there safe. So you know, we get there third floor, you know what I'm saying? We knock on the door. But like, we're supposed to ring the door, ring like the bell or something to get in. So like, I'm ringing the bell and no one's coming to the door. Ringing the bell, knocking on the door, and no one's coming. There was one random guy, like knock on the door. I'm like, oh, I don't knock, I bang on the door. Boom, boom, boom. I'm like, yo, like my wife like in labor. So comes help us out. It's low key like a movie at this point because yeah, yeah. I'm outside like, gripping the rails on like on the stairs yelling at me to apply pressure <laughs> to but i also gotta flag down someone to let us in but again it's just the beginning <laughs> this is just the big in my mind this is just the beginning of my labor so we get inside I go to the registration's office or the registration desk. Don't even have the energy to like. I can't even. Remember, she the asked for my social security number. I can't even like. Or was it my, was it my social security? Yeah, it was my social security. First, number. it was your name. I can't say it. Like I'm, in, I'm. I, the contractions don't stop. And if you, if you know, once you get to the point of your contra contractions being like two to three, one to two minutes apart, there's no like stop. Like it's like the intense surges and then there's like the lingers that are still painful but like more manageable than like the intense ones so it goes like intense manageable still contracting but it's okay intense manageable so even like there's no break i'm not getting any break at all he's having to tell the lady the information and my doctor meets us like in the room because he finally calls us back after calling him him not answering he calls back on the way there and he's like i'm gonna tell him you're coming meets us meets us in the um lobby i'll go back to triage they try to check me and they're waiting for me to like not have a contraction or to not be so comfortable or uncomfortable to check me but like I'm in a lot of pain at this point and I'm not 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 contracting um and so like they finally like try to check me and she's like I can't feel how dilated you are because you're so uncomfortable so as soon as she said that I'm like oh my god like there's no way I'm not there's no way I'm like more than I don't know five centimeters because in my mind I'm thinking if I was eight eight to ten seven to ten centimeters dilated you'd feel that like you wouldn't have to go far to feel how dilated it was if I was actually like that dilated so again I'm thinking like this is gonna be forever good thing we got here and I can hunker down but like I don't I'm not getting a break so they come in and they're like hey we're just gonna take you to labor and delivery but they're waiting for the person to come from the, the labor and delivery side so she finally gets there and then I, I just say out loud like oh my gosh I have to poop and just like casually though and i'm thinking it's because i had the pasta before for, for dinner and she looks at me she's like oh she's, she's like girl we need to get you to leave you don't have to poop we need to get you over to the room <laughs> we need you to the delivery room i'm like no like i just had i think i said that like, i just, I just yeah. had pasta and she, she's like okay to lulu girl 
So then she's like, you know what, I'm baby in triage. Let's get you over to the delivery room. So we finally go over there. We get to the room at 9.23. 9.23 p.m. And Damien's working hard, okay? I'm gonna tell you this man is out of breath because of all of the counter pressure and how hard he's having to push on my back for it to even feel like it's doing anything. And he's just like, <sighs> just like breathing. Are you an athlete? It's tough. Uh, don't make your athletes aerobic. run miles anymore. Make them apply yeah. counter pressure to their more an aerobic guy. <laughs> so we get into the room, counter pressure. My doula finally comes at like 9:28. She shows up, um, and thankfully she's there. She can give him a break. But then I had asked him to run to the car to get me the tens unit because that's the other pain management thing that you can use to put on your back. I highly suggest a tens unit. So he runs, you're in the car. Run to the car, call doula. I'm like, look, as soon as I call you, I need either you or someone to come get me because I'm not, I'm not missing this. Stuff's happening fast. So, so, so I, I have- I call to the car, I run out, I get my little like machine knock on the door, they come, they get me, I get back in the room. And I have, they had brought me um, oh, laughing yeah. gas to help take the, like, the edge off. And I started like sniffing, <laughs> breathing that. Smelling. I don't know what you do with that. And I started make, I felt nauseous. And so I, and I heard that, that can make you nauseous, but also what can make you nauseous is transition from just laboring to actual delivery. And in my mind, I'm thinking, oh, I'm just feeling nauseous from the, the laughing gas. So I stopped using that. I don't know where he is at this point. I don't even know if the ten. I think the ten unit is on me right now. I just put it on you. Yeah. And so I stopped using the, the laughing gas. And but in the middle of each like really intense contraction, like I'm talking, right? Like I'm like I'm talking. I'm cracking jokes. I'm laughing. And then I have a really intense contraction. Breathe. Like real. I'm really vocalizing through these. These contractions now and they're putting in the ivs they're still trying to figure like get things sorted in the room yeah, yeah. like nothing really seems was a like lot going on. nothing really seems like you know the baby's about to come because they're also still waiting my doctor's waiting for me to not have a contraction so he can check me. so i'm sitting on the bed like this like i have one leg in the crisscross position and one leg is like off, hanging off the bed and i before this i'm like surveying the room they're still like figuring things out so I'm like, shoot, it's perfect time. I'm gonna go to the bathroom. And so I guess while he's in so the bathroom, I go to I the bathroom. Again, I I'm washing my hands, and then Sidel is in her proper position. And all I hear is, I gotta push. <laughs> like I felt the most intense urge to push, and you know what I did? I pushed because like my body wasn't having me do anything else. So I I push, and I felt a gush of water. Like my water broke. Like just like full gush of water. I turn this way to go on my side, to like push on my side. And my doula's right here, my doctor's right there, like kind of right right next to my doula. And I hear him talking to her and I'm looking at her and I'm like, what, what is he telling me to do? She's like, push. So I push again and there's like, her, I feel her head like come out. And then I push one more time and her body just, I feel her body just, fly out of me and I had her. <laughs> and do you know where this dude was? <laughs> Damn, Sid. <laughs> so, Green 18, blue 42. So in the middle of me pushing, those three push, I think it's like push number two, I heard, like subconsciously, I heard, do you wanna catch your daughter? And you know who, who was asking that someone, <laughs> my doctor was asking him if he wanted to catch her. And you know where he was? Catching her. <laughs> came right down, uh, I, yeah. So I came out the bathroom, saw the first push, the gush. And then I walk in and I'm like, oh, this is happening. And next thing you know, the uh, doctor asked me if I wanted to catch her. The nurse was like, are you sure? They pulled out two, two gloves for me. I uh, put the gloves on the wrong hand on accident. I didn't know what to do. I go down there, I sit, I look. The doc's like, bet you never thought we'd be on the same team, huh? And uh, yeah, it was one, it was two. And then I look over my shoulder and the nurse said, don't forget. Is that a sister? Shoulders oh, are your friend. Come here, sissy. And that was the same sound. That sound that you hear right now, the same sound that I heard, or that I we sister. heard that night. You hungry? Oh, 
I forgot I had lips on. I'm sorry, I'm not used to wearing lips. <laughs> Twin. Right, we got into the delivery room. Hi, come here. We got into the delivery room at it's about to get real crazy in here, so sorry. We're gonna finish the story where we have two kids now and this is this is what happened. Hi! Come here. So we got in the room at 923. I had her at 938. No. She was born seven pounds, eleven ounces, twenty and three fourths inches. And yeah, I didn't tear, I didn't hemorrhage, thank the Lord. And it's made a huge difference in my postpartum experience as well. Yeah, it was just like I, I said it was the the labor and delivery that I wanted, but did it I didn't know I wanted, but I wanted and had, I don't know. Like I said that I wanted to have at home like labor experience, labor at home as long as possible, then go to the hospital. And that's what I did, I just didn't know that that's what I was doing. And it was, it was the most ideal situation, and we're done. No more, no, I'm not, I'm done. I, I don't want, I can't have, I can't be pregnant anymore. I love my kids. I had a really easy labor and delivery, but I just can't be pregnant anymore, but I'm very happy with the outcome of everything, and yeah. Solid. It was, it's, it's a good it story was, though. I hope we told it okay. Again, it got kind of crazy in here towards the end. She's feeding, Daxon's in here exploring his way around, but. 15 minutes. 15 minutes, like active labor from transition to her being out. Three pushes. Gangsta. And I'm done. Like I remember looking at my doula and being like, like I was crying because I was happy she was here, but I was happy that it was over. <laughs> like I was happy that labor was over. And done with. Yo, it happened fast, yo. It was fast. If you want to know what delusional is, it was me. This whole, <laughs> this whole story, because this whole labor and delivery, because I really fast. thought that I was gonna be there all night, all day. I did not know. I did not think she was gonna be born on her due date, which was also my brother Seth's birthday. Should so I they stop? they share a birthday. So yeah, this is little Darren. She's so sweet. This is me all day. Wouldn't have it any other way. So guys, I hope you enjoyed our birth story. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon. If you don't see me on here, I'm on TikTok, Instagram mainly. But yeah, peace and love. Comment below. <laughs> any questions? I feel like this kind of got a little out of out of whack. But if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. Below. <laughs>